Well, that's been one of the biggest stories out of this pandemic. Victoria's failed hotel quarantine scheme, resulting in a second wave of coronavirus right across the state. Then a failed contract tracing team. And our official after official, minister after minister, fronting an inquiry to say, wasn't me, I don't know, no idea how it all happened. Tomorrow, all eyes will be on the Victorian Premier Daniel Andrews as he fronts the hotel quarantine inquiry for the first time. Will he be the one? that will finally give Victorians the answers they deserve. Well, the former Premier himself, Mr Jeff Kennett, joins me now from Melbourne. Jeff Kennett, thank you for coming on the show. Some say this is the greatest failure of government, any government, in Australian history. What's your view? Oh, I'd agree with that, Peter. I mean, uh, even during times of conflict, governments were in control. They respected the Westminster system of democracy. Uh, not long ago, uh, the New South Wales Premier Barry O'Farrell stood down as Premier because he was said to have misled ICAC over a bottle of wine. Here in Victoria, the current Premier has sacked a minister for allowing his government car to chauffeur around his dogs. He sacked another for branch stacking. And yet here we have a situation, very sadly, where we've had over 700 deaths. A lot of businesses have been destroyed. And we've seen an escalation in state debt to levels we've never, ever anticipated. And yet no one is accepting any responsibility for any of that whatsoever. What do you make of the evidence? Uh, you know, there's been about 15 senior officials and or ministers, heads of departments, seriously uh, well-credentialed people front this inquiry and almost no one knows anything, didn't make the decision, had no oversight of it all. How believable is that? Well, it's not believable at all. And in fact, you'd think they've all been briefed to give the same answer. The tragedy is, uh, Peter, that this inquiry is a sham. And in fact, the government solicitor general who is there to advise government is advising the head of this inquiry. And I just ask you to compare this with the financial inquiry headed up by former judge uh, Ken Hain. That was a forensic mm -hmm. inquiry. He never gave up and neither did those who were assisting him. Here, it's a talk fest and the questions are not followed up. And here we've got the Premier now speaking tomorrow for half a day on a Friday when it should have been a Wednesday. Half a day and no one has given answers. Now, let me just make this proposition to you. Ministers, heads of department, all saying what they can't remember they said and did in the last eight months. All of them saying the same thing. How can anyone have any confidence in them for the next eight months if they're not going to remember what they say and do? This is a sham of the highest order. It is, it is the most extraordinary two fingers to the Australian and Victorian public. Now, I mm. hope tomorrow the Premier will get there and he'll speak openly and honestly. But I've got to say to you, based on his track record, we're not going to get any answers tomorrow. And we're going to find ourselves with a government here who has great authority in terms of having control of the lower house and almost control of the upper house because some of the independents always vote with them. They've got another two, and a, two years, two months to go before an election, and they are just treating us like absolute dirt. How do you reconcile the Premier's claim that he was not offered defence force support when three letters from the Prime Minister were released yesterday under FOI and they state categorically three letters in the space of a week, I might add, that he was offered support and he was offered troops in the number of 1,000 in one of those sentences? Well, you can't reconcile them. On one hand, you've got written proof. I suspect also, Peter, this was discussed at the National Cabinet, as it existed then. The Premier has consistently said there was nothing on offer, and I suspect you'll see that no one in his public service told him. I don't accept that. This Premier, whom I like in one sense, I, I get on well with him, so my comments are mm -hmm. not political and they're not personal, but this Premier is the most controlling political figure in recent times anywhere in Australia. He controls his parliamentary party, controls the organisation, and it's his control, his hubris, that has led him to the point where he's always said, it's not my fault, I know nothing, and eventually things get found out. Well, I don't know if we're going to find out anything tomorrow, 
at all. Based on past performance, I say not, uh, but you never know. Uh, <laughs> we can never be 100% sure. Let's just hope so, because there needs to be a return to some sense of decency. Because if they get away with this, if bear in mind, he's set up an inner cabinet in a state of eight ministers, mm -hmm. including himself, to take control of our corona uh, virus response. They are all saying they don't know what they did within eight months. That is unbelievable. And if the judge, ex-judge who's heading this, heading this inquiry had any sense of common decency, she would sack the lot on the basis that not only have they miserably failed, have they, as a result of their failure at hotel quarantine, cost over 700 lives, destroyed many businesses and increased our debt, but they're not prepared to answer the questions. So if you're not answering the questions, if you don't know what you did within the last month, then they are all guilty of failure in administration and certainly administration to the highest standards that we would expect. So I don't think the judge is going to do this. As I say, it was a sham. It was set up by the Premier to avoid answering questions until now. I'll mm -hmm. reserve my final position until tomorrow night, but I'm not losing any sleep over what he might say tomorrow. I mean, you, you've been on a company board. If you were on a company board yes. and 700 people died and you blew out the debt like this and businesses <laughs> went to the wall, you know, I'm being serious here. You've been on an ASX board. Um, ASIC would have you drummed out of business. You'd probably, you know, be facing the courts with industrial manslaughter and worse, and they would have the capacity to seize documents from your business. You've got this yep. inquiry, as you say, set up by the Premier with no power to subpoena documents. All of these, uh, you know, evidentiary witnesses who can't remember anything. You were elected in the 1990s to clean up the last mess left by Labor. I want to know how this compares. And when I spoke to Francis Galbally, who's no legal slouch at all, one of the best lawyers you'll find coming around, he said this is worse than before by, by a quantum leap and that there must be a full royal commission. What do you say to that? Well, I would agree with that because we're not getting the truth and no one's accepting responsibility. And this is worse because then it was just policy uh, mismanagement and economic loss. But this is about lives and it's also about people's businesses are being destroyed totally and they won't recover. Now, obviously, some businesses will th thrive and succeed through this, but this is terribly, terribly serious. But the worst part, Peter, is that we have elected officials who are simply not being honest with their community and they're allowed to get away with it. I can't believe it. They're allowed to get away with it. And as you know, there's nothing we can do for 20, well, sorry, 26 months. Uh, the powers, the governor has no powers. Mm -hmm. We don't have the control of the, uh, the parliament. That is, we mm -hmm. being the opposition and the independents, they don't have control. So we're stuck mm -hmm. with this. And this, it's the most disappointing thing I've seen in my life. Uh, destroys any concept I've ever had of the practice of Westminster democracy as you and I, I think, understand it. And I think most of I the think public, that's the most heartbreaking You wouldn't thing. believe... It, I think, to me, it's heartbreaking because you like to trust your public officials. But if they're simply protecting themselves, if they don't remember, these ministers are running departments of billions of dollars, not 10 million or yeah. billions of dollars, and they're telling the inquiry at the moment and the inquiry is letting them get away with it, oh, I don't remember. I can't remember. Within eight months, they can't remember what they've said and what they've done? Don't give me that. So what confidence can we have that they're going to do anything of importance in the next eight months that they might remember? This is the greatest public sham that you and I will ever experience in our lives. Well, former Premier Jeff Kennett, I suspect your phone and my phone is going to go berserk, expecting uh, someone might tap you on the shoulder and try and draft you to come back and remind Victoria of what leadership looks like. Thank you for your time. Great pleasure, Peter, but I won't be back this week. I'm busy. <laughs> Just this week. Goodness me, watch out. Next week's a new week.